Hi, this is Chirak from scratchbuilds.com and in this video I'm going to show you how I configure my OpenPilot CC 3D flight controller using the latest ground control station version 14.10, the Mini Me. To configure or program the flight controller, you're going to need a USB cable. It's a mini USB port on the flight control board, so make sure you have one uh, this kind of cable handy when you order the CC3D board or the copter from us. The receiver I'm going to be using is Lemon RX DSM2 compatible 6 channel and the radio is uh, DX8 Spectrum. Make sure you have done the binding before we move further. Next download the Open Pilot Ground Control Station. Uh, there will be a link on the screen. It's also in the description. The latest version is the 14.10. Once you've done that, let's connect the, the receiver to the flight control board. And this is the cable um, you want to use uh, to connect the receiver. Okay, so grab the first three wires, which are uh, black, red, and uh, the white. This is going to go into channel one of your receiver. On my receiver, the first pins are for the binding. So I'm going to skip that and plug that into channel one. Make sure when you plug it, uh, the black is your ground and the white is your signal cable. And from there, just grab the second wire in that uh, in that bunch and plug that into channel 2. And then the third one into channel 3, 4, then channel 4, and so on for 5 and 6. Okay, so once all the pins are connected, plug it back into the, the flight control board. Make sure the black wire goes on to left. That's the right way to connect it. If you have purchased the copter from us, the flight controller is already installed and uh, the ESC wires are already connected. But uh, let me show you real quick how you can install the flight controller on your frame and connect the ESC wires to the flight controller. Okay, so first off, the orientation of your flight controller. The air on the top of the case indicates that's the forward part of your flight controller. And if it's not in the case, you can tell the orientation really easy. Uh, the USB port should face backwards. So that mini USB port is the back of the your flight controller. Okay, so make sure you install your flight controller in the right orientation. Once you've done that, it's time to connect the output from the ESCs to this pins over here. And as you can see, these pins are marked from uh, 1 through 6. We'll be using the first four pins since we are installing it, it on the quadcopter and if you have a hexacopter you'll be also using pin 5 and 6. Okay so for our quadcopter here the wires from the front left ESC will go into pin 1. Front right will go to pin 2. Rear right will go to pin 3 and the rear left will go to pin 4 and that's how you connect all four ESC wires to the flight control board for your quadcopter. And once again, make sure you plug in your ESC wires the correct way. The outermost pin is the ground, the one in the center is your power, and the pin on the inside is your signal. Okay, so now we're done with connecting receivers, all the ESC motors to the flight controller. Next thing, plug in your mini USB to the flight control board, plug in the other end into your computer, and fire up the the ground control station. Okay, once connected, click on the vehicle setup wizard. Uh, next screen uh, gives you a little warning that you must remove all the propellers. Uh, we've already done that. So click next. The next screen will ask you to upgrade the, the firmware on it. So go ahead, click upgrade, and it will ask you to disconnect the, the USB. Once disconnected, it will ask you to connect the board again plug in the USB and it will start upgrading the firmware okay so once that is done now you have the latest firmware on it okay so click next and on that screen click next again and then select PWM and select next okay after that select multi rotor and click next and then on the next screen select quadcopter X and select next again and then rapid ESC and then click next 
and click next one more time okay so on this screen we are gonna calibrate the gyros make sure your copter is on the level surface and there are no vibrations or anything okay click calculate and then the ground control station will start calibrating the gyros okay so during this calculation make sure your copter is very stable it does not move or there are no vibrations around it because your stable flight will depend on this this calculations all right so look like the the process is almost complete all right and then click next again all right so this is something new in this new version this is the ESC calibration which was introduced in uh, this is in this latest release okay so calibrating uh, ESC is pretty simple all the instructions are given here uh, all you have to do is make sure your copter is not connected to the battery it's only powered with the USB cable and all the propellers are removed alright so once you have done that click uh, each of these check boxes and then click the start button okay so once you click the start button it will ask you to connect the battery so go ahead power up the copter uh, I'm gonna be using the battery with the EC3 connector because all my XT60s are in charging so sorry about that but uh, go ahead uh, connect the battery and wait for ESCs to beep okay so the battery is connected now hit stop to start calibrating the ESC and the ESCs will beep again wait for a few seconds for calibration to complete once done it will ask you to disconnect the battery but uh, leave it connected as we're gonna need it in the next step to be connected again alright so go ahead and click next okay next up is the motor output calibration in this step we are going to find out each of the motors minimum stable rotational speed so that the motors will not spin below that rate uh, when armed okay so click next and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start spinning each of the motors one by one by moving up the slider and try to find the best minimum stable speed for each of the motors and while we're at it uh, we'll also wanna make sure the motor is spinning in the same direction as shown in the picture okay let's start with the first motor click the start button and uh, start moving up the slider slowly until the motor start just spinning okay and uh, then move the slider just a little bit so that you can hear the motor running really really stable and uh, don't forget the, to check the rotation uh, the direction of the rotation okay so once you're satisfied click stop and then click next to go do the same thing for the next motor all right so here we go all the four motor output calibration is done next thing click next okay so the next screen is initial tuning this also new feature that was introduced in the latest release of ground control station uh, version 14.10 and what it does is it provides you the best initial settings the best initial PID settings for your particular frame and as you can see here they have a list of uh, most popular frames available out there and once you load the settings for your particular frame you can always fine-tune it and make it more responsive to your stick movements. so the frame I have here is similar to DJI 450 or if you purchase the SB250 which is similar to the QAV250 frame select that configuration and click next for our configuration here I'm gonna select DJI F450 and select next and then click save to save everything we have done so far to save it to the flight control board okay so all the configuration has been saved to our flight controller so now we can move on to the next section which is to configure our transmitter mm -hmm. alright so click next and you will be presented to the transmitter set of wizard but one thing we want to make sure before we start configuring our transmitter that your receiver is already binded to your transmitter alright so uh, go ahead and turn on your transmitter 
the way I have configured my transmitter is my channel 5 is on uh, 3 position switch you can either set it on 2 or 3 position switch and the channel 6 is configured on the pot so that I can uh, fine tune my PIDs alright so as you can see our transmitter is on and we have a solid connection to our receiver so go ahead and uh, click on the transmitter setup wizard okay once you click next you'll get a message saying the copter is disarmed for your safety and uh, you will have to set up how you want to arm it until that you cannot arm the copter okay so uh, click next and then uh, select acro and then click next again and then select the type of your transmitter mine is mode 2 so I'm gonna select that and click next Okay, so next step is uh, input channel configuration and all we have to do is follow just the simple on-screen instructions. Okay, first one, uh, move the throttle stick. So go ahead, move your throttle stick. Okay, once that's registered, move the, the roll. So there we go. And then the pitch. So move the pitch stick and then the yaw. Okay, so once that is registered, it will ask you to flick the switches. This is for the flight control mode. So I have set it up on three position switch here. So I'm going to flick that. You might have to flick it a few times to get registered. Okay, looks like that's done. And then um, um, I have selected knob as my channel six, and that's going to be that slider uh, on the screen. So move that all the way a few times. For the accessory 1 and 2, I'm not going to be using it, so I'm going to just click next and skip it. Okay, so next step is uh, you need to center all your controls and trims. Uh, we haven't used the trim, so we're fine there. Uh, you also have to center your uh, position switch, but if you have only two position switch, you can leave it on either, you, you can leave it on either side. Okay, so I'm going to move it on center and then move the throttle stick, uh, stick to the center sorry and then uh, the stick is already centered and I'm gonna make sure the knob is centered uh, you will hear a beep on this radio when it's centered okay so once all the controls are centered click next okay so on this screen uh, you need to move all your controls to its maximum extent so go ahead and do that. It's it's pretty simple. Move, ahead, um, move all your um, control sticks, your flight switches, and the control knob, and make sure you do that several times for each control sticks, knob, and switches to register its minimum and maximum value to the ground control station. Okay. Once you're satisfied with that, click next. On this next screen, we want to make sure that we don't need to um, reverse any channels. So go ahead, move the control sticks on your uh, transmitter and make sure uh, the picture uh, on the screen mimics your stick movements. So as you can see, uh, my throttle is working right, but the yaw need to be uh, reversed. So I'm going to check yaw. And then let's check the roll right, left. So I need to reverse the roll channel as well. So check that. And then... Uh, Okay, it looks like the pitch channel also need to be reversed. So check the pitch. Okay, click next. Okay, so now on this screen, we want to make sure that all the channels we have reversed are working as it should. So move all the sticks and make sure the picture on the screen mimics your stick movements. If not, uh, go ahead, click the back button and uh, check or uncheck that particular channel to make it working. Okay, so it's all good here, so uh, click next. Okay, so now we are into the arming setting. This uh, section configures how you arm or disarm your copter. Uh, there are several um, options there. Um, I'm going to select your right, which is the most commonly used. So when I hold my yaw stick all the way to the right for several seconds, it will arm the, the quadcopter. Okay, and the arming timeout is 30 seconds. You can change if you want to, but leave it to 30. What happens is if you arm the copter and don't give any throttle input for 30 seconds, it's going to disarm the copter again. And for your safety, I recommend not to disable it. All right, click save and we're almost done. 
uh, one more thing go to the flight mode switch settings this is where you can assign different flight modes to your two or three position switch okay so as you can see in this picture on three position of the switch one two and three I have flight modes three two and one you can change this order if you want to I'm not gonna go into the details of the flight mode but as you can see on stabilize one we have set a roll and pitch axis to attitude that means it's on the stable mode and on the stabilized mode 3 the stabilization 3 we have set the roll pitch and yo all to the rate this is the this is the flight mode where you can do all the crazy maneuvers like flips and whatnot okay so if you're just starting out or not too familiar with the rate mode make sure you don't take off in the rate mode otherwise you will get no stabilization whatsoever okay if you're happy with your settings go ahead and click save okay one more thing that I'd like to do it's not necessary to do is go into the output settings and move all the sliders to the same exact value um, these are the same sliders as we did uh, while setting up the lowest stable speed for the motors so what I do is I try to set them to the average value of all four motors and as you can see I have set them all to uh, the value of uh, 1141 okay click save and we are all done alright so we're almost done here uh, the video is going a little bit over 15 minutes but it normally takes about three to five minutes to configure everything okay so let's test it out go ahead click the disconnect button uh, once disconnected from the computer uh, pull the, the the USB okay once you do that disconnect the battery turn off the the transmitter also in the future anytime you change any settings on the flight controller make sure you do the power cycle so that's what we're doing here disconnect the battery that the transmitter is off and then go ahead turn on the transmitter on this once the transmitter is on go ahead plug in the battery uh, again I'm sorry for using this EC3 connector all my XT60s are in charging right now okay so there we go we have a solid connection to the receiver okay when you plug in the battery the blue LED will flash fast that is when the board the flight control board is booting up and then it will flash low that means it is uh, ready to be armed uh, there is no error or anything in there and then when you try to arm it, when you yaw all the way to the right, in my case, the blue LED will flash fast again. That is its arming. And once it starts flashing like a strobe light, uh, you will know that the copter is armed. All right, so let's go ahead and arm the copter. All right, so now it's armed. And as you can see, the, uh, the blue LED is uh, flashing like a strobe okay so let's go ahead and uh, give it a little throttle and see what happens okay so motors are armed and they're spinning go throttle up okay looks like everything is working perfect throttle is all the way down and if I don't give any input for next 30 seconds uh, the copter will be disarmed by itself and if I want to disarm it now all I have to do is your left and it will disarm the copter as you can see the the LED is blinking slow again alright so that is it that is how you can configure your open pilot CC 3d flight controller with the latest release of the ground control station uh, version 14.10 okay so thank you so much for watching guys I think it's time for me to grab those XT60 batteries in charging, put them on a copter and get some airtime.